Bank CEOs on the hot seat. The CEOs of Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, and Morgan Stanley testifying before Congress over the past couple of days. They faced a grilling on issues including capitalism, overdraft fees, loans, voting rules, and climate change. Here now, Vining Sparks Director of Bank Advisory and Strategic Services, Marty Mosby, also joining the conversation all morning long. Wall Street Journal Assistant Editorial Page Editor James Freeman and Polster and Mass Lansky and Partners President, the author of Persuasion, Lee Carter. Great to see all of you this Friday morning. Marty, yesterday, J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon, Citigroup's Jane Frazier expressed doubt on a minimum global corporate tax rate that could work and actually push more businesses overseas. Your thoughts on that and just what you heard over the last couple of days? Well, what we heard from these uh, CEOs is that, one, uh, there is some threat uh, looking at whether or not they'll be able to control their, you know, capital. Uh, capital has been built up over the last decade uh, in rela relation to, you know, what we went through in the financial crisis. And as that capital's been built up, uh, the safety and soundness, which really provided a lot of flexibility as we went through last year's, uh, you know, shutdown and the ability for those banks to step in and help versus be the recipient of help, uh, really helped the economy bounce back. Now, when we get past this, it's going to be whether or not they'll be able to release some of that capital. Uh, and what happens if you don't let the them efficiently make that decision, it'll push them to have to create extra growth. And sometimes that can create its own risk. So I think managing capital efficiently, going through the CCAR process that they have, and not, you know, kind of shutting down share repurchase as we come out the other side of this financial crisis is really one of the big decisions that was, was on the table yesterday. You see this throughout government, though, Marty, a push, even on by people on the left, on the Federal Reserve, one of the banking regulators, to, for the Federal Reserve, rather than just worrying about employment, you know, full employment and tame inflation, people, liberals, many in control in the government, want the Fed to address uh, climate change, racial disparities, and then, of course, regulating the banks more tightly. How big of a risk is that? Well, that's the, the other... Uh, piece of the puzzle that was kind of thrown out there uh, over the last couple of days is how active uh, and how, how much are we going to push these CEOs into the political arena. Uh, and so how they react to that, uh, they want to be, you know, proactive in helping their communities. Uh, but there is a line at which, you know, you kind of cross from the, the private sector into the public sector, and uh, it can become detrimental to shareholders, uh, employees, customers, uh, because you have a personality at the top, and how do you align that throughout the whole organization? So I think they need to be proactive. They need to be investing in communities. But at some point, uh, you know, just getting involved in every, you know, social issue can be somewhat counterproductive for these companies. James Freeman, jump in here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Marty, just to expand on that, obviously a lot of pressure from the Biden administration on banks not to lend to oil projects, to fossil fuel projects. Uh, we've seen this uh, through executive orders through, and pressure from Senate Democrats as well. You see uh, John Kerry writing uh, or, or speaking to banks saying, uh, don't do fossil fuel investments. Um, is that uh, now uh, among the big banks an area they just won't invest in? And, and consequently, do you see any regional banks who are saying, we want to be the oil bank, we will fund these projects, whether it's in Alaska or anywhere else? So there is that interaction. Uh, when you begin to tighten down at the top of the, you know, of the bigger banks, uh, there's always going to be, you know, other banks that can kind of step in and begin to help. But what you have with the bigger banks is the ability to take on the corporate debt, uh, the bigger, you know, companies that need these projects. Uh, there is a lot of review. Uh, there's a lot of process. Uh, there was, uh, in just last year's uh, annual kind of meeting that we go to, Jamie Dimon was standing up there and going through the process of what they do and looking at all what, you know, get involved in, what projects they let lend to and what projects they decide not to. So there is a consciousness of going through, uh, trying to push that even further just to kind of get to these end results uh, can create counterproductive things where we push some of these deals downstream and they get to be bigger than what those banks can particularly take on, again, creating more risk. Mm -hmm. Whenever you affect what's happening in financial markets, 
markets, the end result almost always is creating unintended risk that eventually comes back to bite you. Very true. Very fascinating. I want to just get your reaction to, well, the kind of heated argument about overdraft fees the other day. Take a listen. Your bank, J.P. Morgan, collects more than seven times as much money in overdraft fees per account than your competitors. So, Mr. Diamond, how much did J.P. Morgan collect in overdraft fees from their consumers in 2020? Well, I, your, I think your numbers are totally inaccurate, but we'll have to sit down privately and so go through these that. These are public numbers. And, and I, also, I also want to point out we did not overdraft. Can, can you just answer account. my question? We, we How much did J.P. Morgan we did collect? Not overdraft, we did not overdraft at the Fed account. And at any request, so you never, said they needed, I'm sorry, they needed Mr. Diamond, relief. that was, Mr. Diamond, that was not the question. On did you, you had an automatic protection. Well, Elizabeth Warren acting as the CEO of the largest bank in the country. Are you expecting more regulations ahead, Marty? Um, this was a, t a huge topic coming out of uh, the last financial crisis. And, uh, and at that point, banks had gotten ahead and, and created uh, too many options, too many, too many ways that customers could mess up and get charged this $30 uh, fee. Uh, when you look at it, that has been such a focus. The actual amount uh, that you see from this has been cut in half already. So this, this isn't something that hasn't been really spent a lot of time on. Uh, when you look at it right now, it really becomes more of a convenience fee, where if somebody wants to bounce a check or get a, a payment re, you know, kind of sent back, they'd rather pay the $30. So you can opt in or you can opt out of that. So you can choose that I don't want the $30 and just, you know, when anything comes in, you can bounce it right back or I'll pay the $30. So this has been created uh, to be as a convenient, more in a service and a value add than a penalty that it used to be uh, before we went through the last uh, review and, and all the, the cleanup of this that we've gone through in the last 10 years. Uh, before we go, Marty, would you buy the banks here? Well, when we look at it, there's, um, there's really two major risks that banks face, uh, credit risk and interest rate risk. Uh, when we were in the middle of last year uh, in the shutdown, you had both that were you know, front and center. And so the, the valuations of banks were just crushed. Uh, and it took a lot longer for them to come back than it did the overall market. About fall of last year, the credit, uh, all this fiscal stimulus, uh, monetary stimulus, became apparent that credit costs were not going to go up. So banks soared uh, as we went through the fall and into the spring here. The problem is we have interest rate risk that is real and still in front of the group. So we've gotten through the credit side. Uh, at this point, I think we're getting pretty fairly valued, and we still have that interest rate risk in front of us. So I think there is uh, a point here where we take a little bit of a, a pause okay. and let's uh, deal with this credit risk as we go over the next uh, couple of quarters. Marty Mosby, great to see you this morning. Have a terrific weekend, long weekend for you. You too. Thanks for having me. Yes. See you soon.